Hey, good morning, everybody. It's uh, Friday morning, Black Friday, but you guys are all online just going to get your crazy. And those guys are you guys in the U.S. and Canada anyway. I know I have friends. We're Right now I'm in uh, Ottawa and we're 45 minutes from the U.S. border. So I have friends that are in the U.S. down in Watertown there, Watertown and Syracuse. They're off, off shopping. <laughs> but the, the border is going to be crazy coming back. Anyway, I'm going down shortly, but not today. Not today. And I got this funky cup. <laughs> this, this is a cup. And for those of you who remember the Muppets, this is Miss Piggy. Uh, this is a cup. There's a Kermit the Frog one in the cupboard. We gave my parents um, those. It's got to be 30 years ago, and they're still hanging around. And it happens to be the only mug that's even close to the size I normally use. So I've got my Miss Piggy cup. <laughs> so today we're going to be talking about um, the, the special needs dog. And I know a lot of you, if you... Um, you read that, you're thinking, doesn't apply to me, special needs. That's like, and I bet you thought, you know, dogs in wheelchairs, um, dogs that need help, you know, help me up, the lifters and so on. So that's not what I consider to be a special needs dog. Yes, it is. They do have special needs. But I'm a big believer that every one of us has a special needs dog least once maybe twice maybe even more times in each one of their lives and why do I say that well I say that because the way that I define a special needs dog is that you have a dog that has an injury you're either you've just noticed it um, you've had it diagnosed you're working with the, the veterinary and your rehab and so on you're doing whatever or you have a chronic injury, an injury that for some reason you just can't seem to get it resolved. Maybe you have a reactive or an aggressive dog. Honestly, that's a special needs dog. That dog has special needs as far as what are the social interactions that you want to set up for your dog because that's the important piece is that our job as, and I don't you know, it really doesn't matter what you call yourself, whether you're a dog owner, whether you're a dog parent, whether you're a dog family, whatever. Your job is to manage the interaction, to set up the interaction so the dog can be successful. So if you have a reactive or an aggressive, an aggressive dog, you need to curate those. You need to create those experiences. Don't just go out into life and let the dog constantly be getting into situations where they're they're stressed, their 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 hormones are going through the through the, the roof that they can't get any calm and confidence. So that's a special needs dog. Your aging dogs. Now somewhere in one of the emails that I that I wrote this this week, I was talking to my mom about the fact that I really don't have you know, I'm not one of those people that's ultra passionate about dogs as they as they age. I love my dogs and I love them right to the very last second of their breath. But I'm not, oh bring me bring on more of those, you know, the the, the peeing in the house and the you know the the stumbles and the aches and all that sort of stuff. I love my dogs. I honestly do. But there's there's lots of people out there who have a passion for that. My friend Carrie Smith, the rehab person that we've done an interview with, it's in the in the um, in the member the membership group she's passionate about the senior dogs and that's I love that about her it's it's just not something that I, but aging dogs have special needs they can't walk with you anymore like when I say they can't walk with you anymore if you have more than one dog that both aren't aging at the same rate you have to make spe special adaptations for your aging dog. So you, you you might have to take them completely separate walk. That happened to me with, with Diaz, my black and tan English English cocker. You'll see her in some of the things, not a, not a lot of the, th the things. But she was quite a bit older than my than my other dogs. And for all her life, she would, all the dogs would be going out into the bush. They free run in the bush, you know, go for an hour, hour and a half. She would go. She was with me all the way through my mountain climbing training in the, at 
uh, in, in the uh, Foothill, Foothill Mountains that we have near, near here, going up those, she was always with me doing that. And as she crossed that 11 year old mark, she started to really slow down and she couldn't do that. And, and you know, and she had to, we had to slow down, take her on different, different walks and so on and bring one of the other dogs into the into that particular role so that's a special needs dog maybe they have a chronic illness or a disease that means that they can't do things exactly as your other dogs other dogs do um there's so many there's so many of them and you know diabetes is one of them and it just it blows my mind when i say the word diabetes in dogs because there's no reason the dogs should have diabetes. A life disease is not a genetically inherited disease, except that you know there's there's very specific pieces of it. But generally, it's a lifestyle disease. There's no way that dogs should be get dogs should be getting that. But chronic chronic illness, um, you know, maybe even things uh, you know as allergies. You've got dogs uh, that can't go you can't be exposed to grass and stuff like that those are your special needs dogs um even your overweight now the segue from diabetes to overweight even your overweight dog is a special needs dog now guys i'm not going to preach it's no different than than in humans i'm overweight i am working on that it's a goal of mine over the next 12 months to to hit the goal that I set for myself 18 months ago, and I am going to do it. Uh, but if you have an overweight dog, and we're gonna talk about this a little bit more, um, I don't know which episode it is, but I've got an episode coming up about over overweight dogs. There is a blog post, a blog post out there. That's a special needs dog. Sadly, it's one that you are creating. In most cases, and honestly, guys, it's not thyroid. It really isn't. Thyroid is not the reason that the majority of dogs are overweight. They're overweight because you're putting too much food in there, too many calories into their system. But what happens is that with, for, and I'll have to get the exact statistics on, on this, but for every four pounds, I think it's every four pounds, it's a very small amount. The extra that the dog has, it takes, it actually takes a year off the dog's life because of their joints. Now, if you think of um, women in particular, women and men, women and, and men, humans, that have knee replacements, almost everybody is overweight because that weight is jamming down on the knees. And that's what happens to your dogs. And it doesn't just happen on the back legs, it happens on the front legs. So you've got the wrists, you've got the, you've got the elbows, um, not the shoulders, because they don't have a, sh have a shoulder joint, but then you've got the, the back, the, uh, the knees at the back, the, uh, the hocks. All those joints get damaged because of extra weight on the dog's body. So there's your special, and, and they, can't, they can't honestly have the same quality of walks as they're in Entitled to because they're carrying too much weight, and and you gotta you gotta listen to your vets, guys. You really have to listen to your vets because if your vets are telling you this phrase, your dog could lose a couple of pounds. He probably means your dog could lose ten or more. Now, and the other the last thing is, and these are these different ways to look at your uh, look at your special needs dog. Is your dog socially inept? Do they not have the right social skills? Because if they don't have the right social skills, they have special needs. You're back to, you're having to manage your, manage your interactions, which you should be doing all the time. But a socially inept dog, if you're at a point where you just simply can't take, take them out, then your lifestyle and what you can do with your dog is, comp, is being compromised. So you want to be looking at, you want to be looking at those things. So how many of you, now that you've heard all of this, how many of you have a special needs dog? I'm guessing that most of you would say yes. You either have one, you've just had one, or you know you're coming up to where you might have one, or, 
or who knows if it's if it's a, an injury. At moment has been a special needs dog on several several occasions when we've had to have him in in rehab to keep the back back leveled out and so on. Ducati was a special needs dog on several on several occasions. Alive, she just kept getting herself into stuff. So yeah, I, very few of my dogs have have never hit that special needs category. Now, question is, why am I talking about this? What do we do with them? Well, the answer is we do the same thing with our special needs dogs as we do with all of the other dogs. Number one, first and foremost, we focus on their confidence. Just think about your grandparents or your great grandparents. Falling is the number one reason for injury and or, and or death. And why is that? Because number one, they start to lose their balance and they don't do anything to do anything, anything with it. But they lose their confidence. One slip, and you know how it is. You go out there and you slip a bit and then you're like, oh, got to be careful walking on ice. So you slip once, you're like, and you make it so much worse. So the thing is, when you've got a dog that has any sort of, any one of the things that I talked about at the very, uh, in the beginning, any one of those six, six things, and there's more. The number one thing that you really need to focus on is you need to focus on activities and interactions that increase their confidence. Because everything else is irrelevant if you're not working on your dog's confidence. Then you want to go about figuring out what is the best way to support their wellness. Not the injury, not the disease, or not the problem that you're having. Having What you want to do is look at the big picture of their wellness. What can I do to support their wellness? Because their wellness isn't just today. Their wellness is tomorrow, three months from now, a year from now, five years from now. You need to be thinking about what can I do now that will help all the way through those things. Regardless of which of those six things we were talking about. The next thing you need to do is as you're doing those things, you have to figure out and you have to find things that work for that dog. And that's a bit of trial and error. That's where, you know, our fit, you know, our fit body, fit mind dog monthly membership is super helpful because over time there'll be, there'll be, it'll be like a massive library of what to do. You know, if this scenario and that scenario, that scenario happens, but what works, you've heard me say it over and over again, what works for one dog might not work for another dog, even if they're brothers and sisters. You never know what's going to work. This is a story of Ducati. What worked for all my friends and all those people, and those, uh, you know, high energy, high achievers, all those, what worked for them just about killed us. So those are the, the pieces, you know, maybe, you know, maybe working once, once a day with your dog three times a week is ideal for your dog and maybe it's not. But only you can figure those out. But you can you get the information and then you try it. Because everything I'm, going to, I'm giving you, you know, whether it's in these videos, whether it's in the blog, and I hope you're reading that, you know, whether it's in emails, all of that, that, or whether it's on the, on the YouTube channel, all those things are great up here. But if you're not actually executing on any of those, if you're not actually trying some of this stuff, you might as well just turn off now. Okay. Um, and the last thing is you. You need to learn as much as you possibly can, both about your dog and about what's available out there that could possibly help your dog at some point. It's what I call building your toolbox. And every day I'm building my toolbox. I'm adding new things in there. Some things that I learned way back when are long gone because they're no longer relevant. I found better things, things that things that work better. But that's important. You think about you're you're kind of like a, a mobile mechanic for your dog. 
because whenever anything happens, you, we, in most cases, we probably have, have an idea of what we should do, or maybe we don't. But at least we have a tool to start looking, do I, to start asking the question, do I have a tool? Do I know something? Do I have access to a resource? Whatever, that could get me started solving this problem. And that's what the that's what the toolbox is. So not going to be long today, but I really want you to want you to think about that in your toolbox. Canine conditioning, fit pause, total fit, indoor exercise, whatever it is, we're going to be calling that. And I'm you're going to hear me talking about indoor exercise a lot more because that's what I believe it truly is: is indoor indoor exercise, all the components of it. That is a critical piece of your toolbox. And you have to know how to use it well, and you have to know how to use it correctly, when to use it, what to use it, all those various different things in partnership with all the other, all the other pieces. So a couple of things to remember today, if you're watching this today, if you're watching it afterwards, then this will be gone. But today, Black Friday, there is the, uh, it's a crazy good, crazy good deal, $600 off the ABCs of canine conditioning package, which is the six course, which is the six courses, which if you buy them individually is well over a thousand, a thousand dollars. So you would save $600 on this. If you buy it today, it ends at midnight tonight. So this is literally for everybody. It's for individuals. It's for people with businesses. It's for people with businesses who have people working for them. You can use it for that. All of that. It walks you step by step you know, all the way through. So just click on the, um, there's a thing in the Facebook page, there's something in your email. In your email. Um, and if you're new to me and you're, you're watching this after the fact, uh, just go to the go to the website, www, obviously. I don't know why I say that, nobody says that anymore. Momentsforexcellence.com and that will get you started in there. The other thing to remember, the Fit Body, Fit Mind Dog, monthly membership, opening, I think it's the 9th of, De 9th of December, three days only. It's either the 9th or the 11th. I'll have to confirm that. But again, on the website, you can get on the you can get on the um, the wait list there. It is opening for three days only. It is the repository. If you want to become the expert on your dog, the world's leading expert on your dog, on all these things that we're talking about, that's the place that you want to be. Okay. See you guys later. Enjoy, and I will see you back here on Monday.